Um, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in my almost 30 years in public life, I must confess to being at a loss for words. Indeed, I'm truly stunned. No way could I have imagined as callous and as indifferent a response to the state of the social and economic affairs in Barbados today as that of the Right Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Prendell Stewart, speaking to Barbadians from a Democratic Labour Party event in New York. That the Prime Minister could have gone ahead with that trip to an anniversary cocktail sip for the Democratic Labour Party in the United States of America in the first place, under these circumstances, is mind-boggling. No previous leader of Barbados that I know would have absconded himself from a scenario where doubt hangs over the ability of the country to pay public servants in an ensuing week. The issue involving the declaration of war between the Minister of Finance and the Governor of the Central Bank transcends consideration of jurisdictional authority. It goes to the heart of answering the question whether the government will be able to come up with the money to meet its end of month commitments without the Central Bank printing money and buying government securities. Therefore, it is preposterous for the leader of this country to say to the nation from the sidelines of this political party event in New York that he has not bestirred himself to get involved in the matter. To have said it in New York that he has not made himself conversant with the circumstances concerning the attempt to terminate the employment of the governor of the Central Bank prematurely speaks volumes about Mr. Stewart's approach to the management of the affairs of Barbados. It speaks to a Prime Minister entirely disconnected from and unconcerned with the affairs of state and presiding over a dysfunctional government. All Barbadians are by now aware that the Minister of Finance, Mr. Sinclair, communicated to the Governor of the Central Bank that he should leave the Central Bank voluntarily or be sent. It is beyond belief that Mr. Sinclair would have taken such a monumental and far-reaching step without first conferring with the Prime Minister and explaining the necessity for such a decision. Termination of the employment of a Governor of the Central Bank is not a small matter. It is a matter of the highest national importance. If Sinclair did not communicate with Mr. Stewart, then Mr. Sinclair should be fired. But if, as I believe, he did discuss the matter with Mr. Stewart, the Prime Minister is plainly attempting to delude and to deceive Barbadians by stating that he has not made himself, quote, privy to all that has been happening, unquote. From the time the story broke two weeks ago, the Prime Minister was under a duty to make himself privy. His application of the duty to inform himself about the matter is nothing short of gross incompetence and recklessness. Worst of all, he is hanging Mr. Sinclair out to dry. And to crown Mr. Stewart's trifling of serious matters is his statement that this matter started with the Governor of the Central Bank and not the Minister of Finance. Now that is absolute nonsense on stilts, masquerading as smart use of language. It was Mr. Sinclair who originated the decision to terminate the Governor. Mr. Stewart had to be aware of that surely, as is the rest of Barbados. This country, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, can no longer put up with Mr. Stewart's absurd pretenses. The Prime Minister of Barbados has once again given us incontrovertible proof that he is thoroughly unfit to continue the political leadership of this country. This is the same Prime Minister who never admitted to Parliament or the public that he had signed the Cahill Memorandum of Understanding six months before it went to Cabinet or that his ministers had signed it. This is the same Prime Minister who said he would never send home public servants, nor would he charge student fees at the University of the West Indies. We all know what happened. Prime Minister Stewart, in our view, 
has now abdicated all rights to be left alone to sort out and find solutions to the problems besetting barriers. Not even the long mooted bill of our national debt with a loan from the Chinese will have any resonance in an environment where there is a total loss of confidence in the government's policies and personalities. This Prime Minister is clearly indifferent to the gravity of the crises confronting this country. The time has come, we believe, for Barbadians from all walks of life to be given an opportunity to register their disgust at the state of affairs in this country. The Barbados Labour Party has for the past three years warned and beseeched the Prime Minister and the Minister of Finance to stop and to take stock of the deteriorating economy and the state of our fiscal affairs. Downgrade after downgrade has been rubbished by the Prime Minister. And the Minister of Finance has continued to paint an artificial image of promise and recovery when it was clear for all to sense and for all to see that the situation was getting worse and headed to intensive care. Now that the governor of the central bank has finally broken free of ministerial allegiance and dictate and is telling it like it is, the Prime Minister would have us believe that this is all a sideshow and that his flying up to New York to speak to his party faithful at that cocktail sip is of greater importance. Is this what the leadership of Barbados has been reduced to? Of the 275,000 Barbadians, Fandel Stewart is the only person not perplexed or anxious about the ramifications of the ongoing dispute between the Minister of Finance and the Governor of the Central Bank. Fortunately, from what has been whispered and also what has been insinuated and said from other senior members of the Cabinet, it appears that in terms of this callous indifference to the issue, Crundell stands alone. The Barbados Labour Party contends, my friends, that it is now time for Barbadians to be given an opportunity to demonstrate their dissatisfaction with this state of affairs in Barbados. We believe that the Parliamentary Party opposition believes that leading a national march of disgust and a rally thereafter to protest the situation where Barbados finds itself 50 years after independence is now appropriate. We will be marching on the afternoon of Saturday, the 11th of March, 2017. And we call upon all civic-minded Barbadians to join with us in sending a message to Frontel Stewart and his cabinet that their style of governance is not cute. But above all else, that Barbados cannot bear the weight of the indifference and the incompetence of Frontel Stewart and his cabinet for another 12 months. Ironically, yesterday was the fourth anniversary of Barbadians going to the poll at the last elections. As several other commentators have said over the last two weeks, and we have said, sat back and listened to them, including some of their own, this crisis situation is bigger than each of us. We in the Barbados Labour Party are therefore determined that no one, not even the titular leader of this country, must be allowed to stand in the way of the urgent need to stop the hemorrhaging, to stabilize the country, and to put us back on the proper path to recovery. The will of the Barbadian people may be delayed, but it may never be denied. The National March of Disgust and the rally thereafter, I forewarn the country, is but the first salvo by the Barbados Labour Party to let it be known that enough is enough. We will not sit silently and permit the wholesale destruction of Barbados simply to allow a government to limp or crawl its way to the constitutionally stipulated finish line. This is not about finishing the five years given to a government. This must now be about stopping the rot and re-energizing Barbados for Barbadians. This must be about giving 
Barbados and Barbadians a chance.